Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope that you're doing well. I wanted to talk to you today about music. Music is something that has been by my side the last few years as a friend and has given me strength in situations that I did not ever think I'd have to deal with. And probably like you, you found your your things that amplify your goodness feelings, your happiness um, quotient. And for me, it's been, it's been music and amongst other things. But I looked at an article by one of our bloggers, Terry White, and she was talking about how music has re-energized her in her life as she's gotten older. And she said that she used to love playing music when she was a child. And uh, I never had the benefit of, of lessons, but I always loved listening to music when I was younger. And you know, those days maybe you can identify with the folk songs, the Joni Mitchell, the, you know, the songs that were more poetic. That was kind of my style, but um, she was more classical. And so the story she tells in this article, which I encourage you to read, is all about how she rediscovered the flute. Um, it was one of those things that came in a box that she had when she moved and she opened the box and it was like, oh, <laughs> that's something I haven't played in a while. She took a few lessons and then she discovered she loved it. Joined a small choir, a group, an orchestra, a little group, and, and they just did all kinds of beautiful things together. And then of course, you know, ch uh, times changed and everything went online. And she then was like, you know, dealing with online performances, which is all wonderful because that's how things evolve. We just match the situation that we're in, right? Now, today music connects us in many, many ways. And, and Terry talks about research that she's read and, re and, and discovered that proves that music not only has a, a sort of a, an emotional connection, it actually on a chemical le level helps our bodies to feel better and to heal. Now, maybe some of you have watched the video of the uh, older gentleman who had, I think he had been a jazz singer or jazz player, and he was um, dealing with dementia, Alzheimer's. And he was in a, he was in a, a care home and his, uh, I think it was his, uh, his daughter, granddaughter came in with a, a play, a, a tape recorder or the, you know, with a, a, a boom box, played it, played, played the tunes. And he just came to life. It was actually very, very moving. This was a man who was hardly communicating, very quiet, and then he came on and he was singing. And you could feel his body just coming to life. And so this was at the beginning of some research for lots of people who found that not only was it good for your soul in, you know, in day to day life, but it also helped when you were not well. And this, uh, that, you know, that somehow the, it touched the memory at a very, very deep level. And I watched another one with a ballet dancer who, a woman who had been a ballet dancer who they played Swan Lake to. And she was like dancing to Swan Lake. She, it brought back all the memories. Anyway. I was just really impressed by those examples that just show that music not only makes you feel good, it makes you healthier and calms your nerves. And I think it was a Stanford University uh, study, I can't remember all the details, but they said that rhythmic music also stimulates the brain. And it's, it's, it not only stimulates the brain uh, to feel good, because the brain is easily tricked, you just have to smile and the brain thinks you're happy. But anyway, it increases the blood flow to the brain and it is it actually has been proven to have in increased cognitive results. So people that listen to music and then take a test do better. And that's Stanford, a Stanford University study that you know really d d sort of dove into this whole topic of how the brain chemically helps us to feel better. I think John Hopkins has also done some surveys that Terry talks about and they compare um, brain uh, activity during listening to music like a workout. And the reason I guess for that is that the, the brain actually is putting things together, like you're connecting instruments, you're connecting a voice and a sound, and your brain apparently goes through quite a complicated process of, of uh, stitching together a musical piece. It's a relationship. It's kind of relating one note to another, one sound to another. And this um, is you know, good for your brain. It maybe has a lot of computing to do. And so, so music is not only harmonically beautiful, it's mathematically interesting, and, um, and it stimulates your body on all different kinds of levels. Uh, classical music specifically, I think, has been shown to be sp very um, complex, but also good for brain cognitive um, you know, uh, ability. I know that this couple of years, I've actually been really into classical music, and it started actually, funnily enough, with with a with a, a, um, a pop song that was combined with with classical when Andrea Bocelli and Ed Sheeran got together and sang uh, "Perfect," which is one of Ed Sheeran's songs. So it's a it was a, you know, it's a pop song and very beautiful little rhythm. But when he had when he sang with Andrea Bocelli, who is one of my absolute favorite musicians in the world, um, he brought it to life. 
and the two of them together just you know really reignited my my passion for for music for classical music and so I started exploring you know Mozart and Chopin and piano concertos and you know things that I just love and some of the Wagner and, and Beethoven I just um well, first of all, I just it just made me amazed how how they could do that, how they could con con compose something like that. And at Christmas is um, one Christmas a while ago, I actually listened to Handel's Messiah. It was actually a very funny story because I listened to it in the morning, like at six o'clock, and I was just listening and in tears at the beauty of this piece and the fact that Handel, although he had, of course, practiced for thirty years, <laughs> had written it in twenty four days. Anyway, I was just, I just got seduced by um, by music as well, and I was really happy when I read Terry's article how she, as a musician, had actually got pulled into it again. So, what else does it do? Well, it um, yeah. Oh, this one point that I was reading my notes here. This is very interesting for those of you who have got grandchildren, and if you're you know adults with, with you know my my children are also interested in this. My adult children, music. Uh, if you if you get training in music when you're younger. You actually, it actually helps your brain activity as you get older. And, you know, a lot of young children are not able to get the benefit of that because, well, in many cases, the first thing to go when you, when the, the you know, governments are, are reassessing where to spend money, and I know that's been a challenge for the last few years, is they, you know, they cut the music programs or they cut the art, the, 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 the programs that teach children music and, and the artistic skills. But internet to the rescue, <laughs> because there is so much, online that you can do now with with music and you don't have to pay expensive uh, you know private lessons you can actually just give your children and grandchildren what a great gift as well for a, a grandchild to have um, you know given by a grandparent lessons in or any instrument that they love violin piano I was chatting with my little grandson and he and Max and he was saying you know I think I'd rather do violin than piano go figure and why? But it's just, it doesn't matter. It's just whatever, um, because I love piano, of course, uh, you know, wh whatever speaks to them, that's where you want to go. So have a chat with your grandchildren and see what they really love. And I managed to uh, find uh, some, some sites that you might be interested in. They're not ones that I've used or that I have any uh, you know, business arrangement with or anything like that. They're just ones that just look really cool. Um, there's one called Usician, like you and then Sition, like musician, usician.com. Um, there's one called Lesson for, lessonface.com, and that one does just doesn't do just music. It does other things too, other um, uh, skills like uh, you know, um, oh I don't know, crafts and and, and other um, skills other than music. But it does a whole range. So are you interested in horns or music or a piano? You can find the online, and you can do a little tester with those too, a free trial. And then there's another one called artistworks.com. I'm sure you can find many, many of these if you go out online, just online music training. There was a guy I met on the Nomad Cruise, which is a cruise I did years ago, um, uh, when I went out on the ocean with like 250 young people. They were under 30, all of them under 40. I was the oldest person. And um, there was a man there who, uh, his passion, and it was all about people that went out into the world and did things free of you know a base home base they traveled and he was a guitar player and that's all he could do that was his thing so he did spanish guitar so he decided he was going to start a youtube channel and teach people how to play guitar in this and he has a specific style so he started this business and it became a huge success and um i think I, if i can find it i'll put his, his details but it was just one of those things where you know he loved music it was his passion he started a business he's now making a lot of money and people are learning how to play guitar which i thought was really cool but you can find lots and lots of people so just to just to review it like you know mu music is not just good for your heart and soul it's good for your health it improves your cognitive abilities it helps with sleep that's another thing. I go to sleep sometimes listening to music and it's just such a, a peaceful way to slide into sleep and just have your timer turned off so it doesn't, well, I guess it could play through the night. It might stimulate some dreams, I don't know. But, um, but it can just help you in so many ways. It can be your friend in lonely times. It can be your inspiration in energetic times. I know when I'm writing, sometimes I put my uh, headphones on and I just listen to music while I type. And this is a weird thing. I actually do type sometimes with my eyes closed. I, if I'm listening to music and I'm writing an article about something that's just, oh, I don't know, just I'm just wanting a stream of consciousness, I'll just type without even looking. And then I go back, of course, and do autocorrect. <laughs> but it's really fun. But music um, has helped me in so many ways, and perhaps it has uh, you as well. So I'd love to know, you know, have you 
I mean, do you enjoy music? Has it been your friend? How have you used it in your life the last few years? What instrument in particular do you love? What piece of music do you particularly love? Let's have a conversation. I just want to start a dialogue with you guys and uh, just give you something to think about. Have you tried online lessons? And if you've got something to share with us, if you found a place that you like or found useful, please let us know. Okay, everybody, we'll have a really fabulous day wherever you are. I'm with you always. Take very good care. Bye-bye for now.